Hey guys, this is Shea from Skull Gaming Network. Welcome to another video and welcome to my first retro goal video, which as you hopefully can tell by the title is my retro goal review. Now I will be starting later this week, Skull's Road to Glory in retro goal, but I thought the first video I should do on the game is kind of reviewing it for you guys so you know what to think of it, what to expect from it, my honest thoughts and opinions on the game. Now, obviously, if I'm starting a series on it, I'm not going to totally dislike it, but I am going to try to be fair throughout the review process in terms of my thoughts on the game. We're going to start a new save. And the first feature I want to talk about in Retro Goal is customization. I'm going to rate a few different features on a scale from 1 to 10, 10 being better, 1 being worse, and then at the end I'm going to do an overall review. Now for customization, I'm giving it a 5 out of 10. You can customize quite a bit in terms of, like, you can change your country, you can pick any favorite team you want... It's pretty in-depth from that perspective. I'll go pick Minnesota United, because I'm a Minnesotan, so there won't be any real bias there. You can customize your team, like your manager name. We'll name the manager, I don't know. Let's go David Beckham, just so I can show you guys that. There's four different difficulties half season or full season. I actually played full seasons. I'll do a half season to show that. So, you know, there's some customization. And then, right, you can build yourself up, prove yourself, take different job offers. And your first offer, you can actually travel around the whole time. So that's where they're getting five points on customization. There's quite a bit of freedom in terms of who you coach there's a lot of teams you can coach we'll join pittsburgh but where it doesn't get more than five points on customization is you can't change player names you can't change team names you can't customize uniforms so being able to customize some of that would give it a few more points and i understand it's not necessarily going to be as customizable as Retro Bowl, where you can do everything. Player names, coach names, team names, team uniforms. But even if we got one or two of those features, that would take customization from a 5. I'd say to at least an 8, probably a 9 or a 10. Up next, as we proceed through the tutorial, we're going to likely come across gameplay. I guess you can change formations as well. So you know what? Let me actually on the fly bump customization up to a 6 because you can customize formations. For gameplay itself, here we go. We're going to go through the tutorial. So you drag and hold to shoot. You release to kick. And the ball goes in the nut. Very similar to how you throw a ball in Retro Bowl. I personally am fine with this part of the gameplay controls. Up next, okay, what am I trying to do? Another pass. Passing is similar. You get the arrow. It's not showing it here, but you get a yellow circle that you can queue up headers. So they give you good guidance for how to aim your passes. I like that. There we go. Send the pass. See, now some of the flick controls, that's where... I don't necessarily mind them, but they're not always as responsive as one would like. And sometimes they're too responsive. So you might have a player where you're flicking, swiping, nothing happens. So then you flick and swipe for the next player, and it reads you flicking and swiping three or four times, and it accidentally triggers something you weren't trying to do because you're trying to just get a first response. Okay, there we go. So headers, then you flick to guide the header, going to pass to our teammate, and then the double tap will shoot at the goal. That double tap, sometimes a double flick will read as a double tap. With all of that in mind, I gave gameplay a 9 out of 10. 
Another thing is trying to bend shots. I've been able to bend shots. It's not always super intuitive, but you know, the tutorial, now that I'm playing through it a second time, that helped. I wish that uh, swiping was a little more consistent, but my guess is that might have to do with player sets, as I have found my better players respond better and my worst players don't respond as well. Up third is the in-game economy. Now this is a hot button issue for a lot of players who have access to retro goal. I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10 and this is going to be probably the most controversial point and controversial argument that I make in this video here today. Because compared to retro bowl, retro goal has a lot more for microtransactions and it feels when you first join in like you might have to spend money. If we go to the store, number one, the highest Starbucks, which is the currency in game transaction is $10 instead of five. Number two, there are premium players and you can buy these premium players with real money. Uh, the big concern I see from people, especially when they start out, is, oh, they're never going to be able to build a good team free to play. And the only way to have a good team and to maintain a good team is to spend real money. This assumption, in my opinion, is false. I'm actually going to, in a second, cut over to my personal save to show you the team I've built free to play, no money spent, and I feel like I'm set up both for right now and for the future very well with that team. The reason I'm giving this a 10, I think Simon is doing what he needs to do, especially the way the Retro Bowl economy has gone, to make enough money for what he deserves for the product he puts out. Number one, you're never going to see an ad in this game. There's no ads, there's no ad tracking, no data tracking. So from that perspective, you pay a little bit and... You never see ads. You never have to deal with that. Number two, a big gripe I've seen is you get 10 free games and then you have to buy unlimited for a dollar. And people are like, oh, Retro Bowl, you get unlimited games and then you buy unlimited to customize, which is currently true. But when Retro Bowl started out, you had to buy unlimited after I think it was four games. The people who are like, oh, you got to fall in love with Retro Bowl and then buy it. You guys joined after Simon made the change to do something nice for people during a pandemic and have a game to play. So I don't blame him for structuring things this way. Uh, I also saw, oh, New Star Games must be paying Simon a huge bag. I actually learned this recently. I should have known it for a lot longer. Simon, who made this game, who made Retro Bowl, is the founder of New Star Games. So yes, Simon is paying himself to make a game he wants that he thinks we would enjoy. And frankly, I've enjoyed it. I know a lot of people have enjoyed it. Uh, so again, in terms of the overall economy in game, I think it's good as is. We're going to go back to my personal save. So I'm playing full seasons here. I finished three full seasons. So I'm at the very beginning of year four we look at this team okay it's not an all five star team let's break it down four star potential goalie four defensemen all at least four star potential at least three star actual skill now i do have a couple weak midfielders but altin and grant they're honestly the best players i have 68 goals and 140 goals those guys they do it all for me and then my forwards my weakest part, to be honest, uh, Blaze Chirac. If you follow me on Twitter, you've heard of him. I post my gameplay highlights there. Decent striker. Morgan Nugent has only played a few games. Same with Ailton LaPoya. But again, I have almost 12000 bucks on top of that. If we go back to team to the transfer list, we'll go through what you can get. Okay, there's these premium players still, but look, you can get a four and a half star goalie for a thousand and forty bucks. On defense, you can get a four and a half star defender for eleven sixty or ten seventy. 
in the midfield, you can get a five-star midfielder straight up, 1270 in-game bucks. You don't have to spend $3 to get a player. And look, 25 years old, 24 years old, you're getting a younger player free to play. You just have to manage your currencies really well. And with strikers, a 23-year-old versus a 26-year-old, okay, there is a bit of a drop-off there. But a 26-year-old, you're still going to get a solid three, four seasons out of. So you definitely, as you progress, can get a really, really, really good team free to play. You don't need to spend money. You maybe just need to spend time with the game. And then fourth and finally, I've got an overall enjoyability factor. I gave it a 10 out of 10. Compared to the Retro Bowl League climate of Retro Bowl, this game is not league-friendly in its current setup. I don't know if it will get to that point or not. I don't think it needs to get there, though. Because for me, on my personal save, I've played three years. I've won league championships two out of the three years. I did not my third year. And I'm still on normal difficulty there. I'm going to ramp up to hard, and then once I get hard down, try to ramp up to extreme. But I've heard a lot of people are struggling to adjust with the higher difficulties, which I think is good because Retro Goal, it seems like, is built to stand on its own, independent of league play, and give a person multiple seasons in-game of individual enjoyment. I think that is huge for the game. Now, as someone who enjoys Retro Bowl Leagues, I would love to see Retro Goal Leagues. I just don't think that at this point it's healthy for a brand new game to only be catered towards a very small subset of a different community that, as real life has opened up, a lot of the Retro Bowl League community has had to take a step back. So I think as is, enjoyability, 10 out of 10. Overall, I think my points add up to a 35 out of 40. I'm going to give the game right now an 8.5 out of 10. I think customization can bump it up to at least a 9. I think there's a couple gameplay bugs that I wasn't going to knock the gameplay score, but I will knock the overall score for. I think one of them is throw-ins can go directly into the goal. I know that's going to get fixed. Not a big deal. The other is the frequency of headers being goals. I guess I'm not as bothered by that either because it's a video game. It's not going to be perfect. But what really annoys me because it doesn't allow me to enjoy using my players is the frequency of yellow cards. And when I say the frequency of yellow cards, if I make a reckless tackle when I'm actually playing, and I get a yellow card, I deserve it. But when you're on defense, the AI simulates it. I think I average three or four yellow cards from the AI per game, and there's no clear way to avoid that. You know, I've upgraded my coaching. I've upgraded my training. Maybe when I change my tactics, maybe I have to go casual. Normally, I go balanced. I would think moderate should not give a crazy amount of yellow cards but maybe casual is the key it would be unfortunate though that you have to play casual to avoid yellow cards and playing casual to avoid yellow cards would give up a bunch of goals and you wouldn't win games i understand it might be part of balancing the game my guess is for the half seasons that amount of yellow cards makes sense but for the full season which is 54 games plus cups plus league it's too many yellow cards. Honestly, half my attack in midfield ends up getting suspended when I didn't actually earn any of those yellow cards through my own reckless play. So if that could be fixed, that would be great. I think those two things would bump it up to a 9, maybe even a 9-5 for me. Um, but overall, Retro Goal is a really good game, given that this is the first version of it to be put out. And there's bound to be some balance issues and bugs that will get fixed. I know Simon has a great track record of fixing any bugs. So I'm really optimistic for this game. Hopefully you guys are too. 
And hopefully you guys enjoyed this video getting a review of Retro Goal. If you did, be sure to leave a like. If you're new around here, subscribe for more mobile gaming content. I'll still be posting Retro Bowl. I'll also, though, be posting Retro Goal. The first episode of My Road to Glory will drop two days after this video is posted. So with this video going up on Saturday, episode one will drop on Monday. But with all of that being said, that's going to do it for now. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And until next time, and as always, peace out.